So today we're going to be talking about quadratics, or essentially they're a new type of graph that we're going to introduce in grade 10 or any other grade that you may be watching for. But it's a new concept and it's probably something you guys have not seen unless you've read ahead or you guys are just very smart and have already completed the unit. Anyways, it's something new and we're going to treat it as something new. So I'll write the word up here. So essentially that's going to be the unit we focus on on this little video series that I'm creating. So before we get into something completely new, we can jump back and go back to something we're already familiar with, and that would be linear relations. So I'll just switch colors for now, just to help color code that a little bit. So linear relations. So visually, if you remember what a linear relation is, it would just be if I were to draw a set of axes here, the x and the y, it's not very important right now, but basically, and a linear relation would be a straight line. And that you should be familiar with from previous units or just previous grades in general. You probably have dealt with this. If you're dealing with quadratics, you probably have dealt with this in the past. Now, for you mathematically able people, that is y equals x, the most simplest way of writing a linear relation. Or some of you might have seen it as y equals mx plus Essentially, the m would be the slope and the v would be the constant or the y-intercept, but basically the important part is m would be a number, v would be a number, and then you have x. So this is something we're familiar with. You should be good with linear relations. Now, on this side, I'm going to introduce quadratic relations. So just from a visual perspective, again, I have my x and I have my y. A uh, quadratic relation essentially is a curve. So just right off the bat, you can see that there's a huge difference between my linear relation here and my quadratic relation here. So one is a straight line, the other one is a curve. And the curve doesn't exactly have to look like this, it could also be upside down. And in the upcoming videos, I'll explain why a curve can be upside down. But the general idea is, if you see two graphs, and one is a straight line, and one is a curve, you should be able to identify now that this is quadratic, this is linear. So that's the basics of it, just from a visual point. And now I'll introduce the equations for quadratic relations. So the simplest way to write quadratic relation is y equals x squared. Now, if you remember, y equals x was the most simplest way of writing a linear relation. y equals x squared is the simplest way of writing my quadratic relation. Now, as I said before, this is the simplest way, and this is the simplest function itself, but there are different ways to write it, so we'll explore that in the video series, but one way that you will see in the following questions that you're about to answer probably in your textbook, you will see it written as ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is how you would see a quadratic relation written in standard form. So before I erase this, I would just like to again emphasize that linear, you had your straight line and you had that y equals x, y equals mx plus b, whatever way you prefer. But uh, quadratics, it's a curve, and y equals x squared is your most basic function. And you might see it written as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The a would be a number, b would be a number, and c would be a number. Again, these are just letters we write as the base form generally. So one thing before I do move on, do you notice that for the straight lines, the linear relations, we don't have a squared or a cubed or anything here. It's just, well, there's nothing there, but one is implied. So it's just y equals x. But whenever you see an x squared, you can right off the bat say that it's quadratic. The x squared has to be the highest power, though. If there's x squared and then there's also an x cubed, then that's not quadratic. If x squared is the highest power, then you're good to go, and that is quadratic. So basically, just visually, this is what it is, and these are the general ideas we'll explore through this video series. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the properties of quadratic functions. So what I'm going to do is just erase this and make this bigger, essentially. So go ahead and do that. Hopefully you're following along. If you want to write this stuff down, you can, but it is in a video format. So if you want to just scroll back and listen to what I said before, you can do that if you want to. So if I make 
then a vaccine again with X on this side and then Y on here. So let's deal with our simplest function, Y equals X squared. So the easiest way to graph a function ever is to make a table of values. It's the most, not the most efficient, but it is the easiest way to go ahead and do it. So let me make myself a good table of values. It's a bit bent up here, but it should be good. So if I had, let's say, let's start at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So my x's are increasing in uh, constant order. So I'm just going to add these points here too. So 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And I'm going to go up by 2 here. And let's say this is 4. So that would be 1, that would be 3. I can add that in. So this is a horrible graph, as you can see, but it gets the job done and will give us a visual of the graph when we draw it. So negative 2, when x is negative 2, what is my y? So negative 2 squared, I'll just write it out. Negative 2 squared, right? It's in brackets, and if I square something negative in brackets, I'll get a positive number, so 4. Same thing, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. Thank you. So now that we have our points, let's go ahead and graph this. So negative 2 was at 4 here, negative 1 was at 1, 0 was at 0, negative 1, 1, and 2, 4. So as you can see, I'm going to get a general curved shape here. Now, this isn't the best curved shape. It's supposed to be symmetrical if you do it on a piece of graph paper you will get a very symmetrical looking graph and a curve. So as you can see, we'll always end up with a curve. Now, what are some things we can identify here or properties of quadratic functions? That's what I'm trying to get at next. So if you can uh, just bear with me here. One thing we can say about these graphs is that it's symmetrical. Now, my graph doesn't look symmetrical as I've said before, but if you were to draw it properly, you would get something symmetrical. So if I cut this graph in half, I would get the same on both sides. But to cut it in half, I need to cut it at a specific point, right? If I cut it in half right here, that's not going to give me the same on both sides. So there's a specific point that I can cut it, and I'll get the same on both sides. And that point we call the vertex. So maybe I should just change colors really quickly just to make it a little bit more visually appealing right this point here. So this is called the vertex. Because if I went ahead and I cut this graph right down the middle, here at 0, 0, as you can see, if I cut it right down, the two sides, my y values would be the same. Look, if I cut it right here, right? y is 1, 4, and I'm good at dropping markers, as you can see, and y over there is 1, 4. So the point here I'm making is that if I cut it, if I cut the graph at the vertex, I get the same. So the point that I can cut the graph and get the same thing on both sides is called the vertex. Now there's more things we can call the vertex, we'll get to that as we get there. But there's another thing I'd like to talk about before I write a list of like bullet points of properties essentially. So if you remember about linear relations, the first differences, right? If I subtracted this y value from this, I would get the same for a linear relation. So let's take a look at quadratic relations and look at their differences essentially in the y values. So, the first difference here, 1 minus 4, right? That's negative 3, right? 0 minus 1, that's negative 1. 1 minus 0, that's 1. 4 minus 1, that's 3. I'm going to go collect the marker that I uh, threw away. Okay, again, now... We see our first differences, so first differences, are not the same, right? Negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, they're not the same clearly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit further. We're going to subtract our first differences from each other. So from here, this is negative 1 minus minus 3, which if you know your integer addition, is 2. 1 minus minus 1, right? Minus minus makes a positive, so 1 plus 1. 2. 3 minus 1, 2. 
So as you can see, for quadratic functions, essentially, my second differences are always constant. But my first differences are second differences. Anyway, so second differences are always constant. First differences for my quadratics are not constant. They're increasing and they have their own way of going about it. But if you do the second differences, you'll always get something constant. So if you come across a question where it gives you a table of values and you're, they're asking you to find if it's linear or quadratic, you could go ahead, calculate your first differences, then your second differences, and you would be able to tell. Another way you could tell is just looking at the table of values. There's a specific point, and then after that, the y's are the same, and before that, the y's are the same. But that's a risky way of going about it. It's better if you just calculate your first differences and your second differences. So now that we've talked about quadratics a little bit, let's write down some things we've learned or I've gone over in this video. So I'll erase this right here. Again, just scroll back if you want to copy it down or if you want to look at it again. I am limited on uh, whiteboard space, which I uh, plan on increasing sometime. But anyway, what are some things we know? So things we know. So we know that it's always a U shape, right? So we can say that we can say that it's symmetrical because, as you can see, it's a U and I cut it in half. So since it's symmetrical, there's always a vertex. So a vertex present. And at the vertex, if I cut it in half, I'll get the same on both sides again. And another thing we learned is the second differences are constant. So as you see there, my uh, list here lists some things about quadratic functions that we went over in this video. So there's a lot more to quadratic functions, but for the first little bit, if you know these few things, you should be good. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the equation here, the ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the A means, what the B does, and what the C stands for. And in that little video, we'll go a little bit more into the properties. And this video was really for an introduction into quadratics for someone that hasn't ever seen it before. And again, my videos are supplementary material. I hope you go through a textbook or something just to make sure this is just something you can refer to. So hopefully that helped. And I hope you watch my next video to delve a little bit deeper into the properties of quadratic functions themselves.